what, one of the worst things that a husband can have is a wife who does not want to hear him. One of the second things that you can have is a wife that does not understand him. The problem is that we don't want to hear God. No. Every Christian wants to hear God. Everyone wants to receive guidance. Everyone wants to know that God loves them. Who, who in their right mind does not want to hear God? We all want to hear God. But the problem is, is that sometimes we can't understand God. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And that, that's a Greek word, and that Greek word is translated to understand. Understanding God's voice. And in other words, understanding how God talks. That's, that's the key. That's the key. Now, we see in uh, John, John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep. And as soon as he says, my sheep, automatically he makes a distinction between ownership. And I want everyone to get this on the prayer line because there's some people who probably jumped on and, you know, you have not uh, believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You may not have done that yet. And you still think, you might, you might have this, uh, this, uh, this false deception that God loves and, and everyone in this world belongs to God. It's true, God loves you. But that does not mean that he is your shepherd. And Jesus, when he says, my sheep, he makes a distinction between ownership. So when he says, my, mine, meaning my, I own you, my sheep, you could almost see a big crowd, a big group of sheep. And Jesus says, mine, he kind of draws the line in, in the middle. So I take this and the other owner takes that. When he says mine, it's almost as if, all right, these, these, these apples are mine. And those oranges belong to you. It's a distinction. So not everyone is a sheep of God. Not everyone belongs to God. Not everyone has submitted themselves to the ownership of Jesus. So he makes a distinction. So here we have... You know, God's sheep, we have God's sheep, which are us, who believe in our heart, as Romans 10 says. We believe in our heart, Romans 10, 13. We believe in our heart, and we've confessed with our mouths that Jesus is the Son of God. He's Lord. Those, are the, those, those of us who have made this step, this, this confession, we are the sheep of God. The Bible says in Mark 16, He that believes, he that is baptized, is saved. He that does not believe is already condemned. It's not like God condemned you because you don't believe in Jesus. Before you were even born, you were condemned. So when you take that opportunity, to, I mean, to really understand that, you know, salvation, if you could understand what God has, has just did, you really appreciate this right here. So Jesus says, my sheep, Meaning, my sheep, I'm the shepherd over these sheep. And those who do not follow me, those who do not listen to me, those who have not publicly confessed me as the Lord, they are of a different pasture. They're called goats. Uh, I, I want to kind of make this clear. If you can go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I want to read something clear, like, I want to make it crystal clear. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1. Did you, wait, did you want to read? Yeah, no, go ahead, that's fine. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Okay, so, so stop right there. It says, and you, this is God talking to us who are already saved. You have been quickened. That means God brought you back to life. You were dead. Spiritually, you were dead. As soon as Adam disobeyed.
disobeyed God. He brought death upon mankind. And God says, you who God, God has quickened, God has made you come back to life spiritually. He's given you access into God's kingdom. Just because you believe, just because you believe in Jesus. It's not, it's not about what you've done. It's not about your work. It's not about how many times you've obeyed and you've went to church. No, but you received access because you believe in, 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 in Christ. As soon as you opened your mouth, God declared you righteous. And as soon as you said, Jesus is Lord, God said, you are my child and I'm giving you access into my kingdom. So let, let's go. God brought you back to life. You're alive. You, you're alive. You're, you're not dead. You're alive. Now, as a Christian, you know, there's something, you know, you're alive. But as a Christian, sometimes, sometimes we, we neglect to do things that God asked us to, and we feel dead. There are times when we disobey God, and we feel like we're dead. But now, in all reality, we're not dead. You are alive. God has quickened you. This means God has revived your soul. He revived your spirit. You are alive in God. Let's go. Let's keep reading. Ephesians 2, verse 1 and 2. Um, <clears throat> verse 2. Where in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, now let's pay close attention to what, what was just read. In time past, before you came to the knowledge that Jesus was Lord, you were dead. And the spirit of Satan, disobedience, it was working inside of you. And for those of you right now in a heart of love, those of you right now who are on this prayer line and you do not know Jesus yet, you are you are dead you are somebody who's walking but you're dead you're walking you're alive you brush your teeth you take a shower you walk outside you go to work but you are dead to God spiritually disconnected from God eternally dead this means that when God comes when God comes back and judges the world you don't even have a chance. It's not that God is mean. It's not that God does not love you. God loves you. But you refuse to accept his gift of salvation. You refuse to understand that Jesus Christ, he is the only way to heaven. So now, you know, going back to John 10, 27, Jesus says, my sheep. Now, do you see why he says my sheep? Because we who accepted him are his sheep. But those who reject him, the spirit of disobedience is working in them. So that means that their shepherd is Satan. Their shepherd is the devil. There is two sides, Christian, saints. Those of you who are on this prayer line, you read the black or white. There are no shades of gray. You're either completely sold out for God, or you are completely under the power of Satan. You, 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 might, you might be on the prayer line and you're saying, hey, you know, I take care of my family. I have a good job. I support my bills. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I've never touched a woman. I don't rape. I, I've never raped anyone. I've never been to jail. I get straight A's. I'm a good person. God should see that and bring me into heaven. But you don't understand that you do not get into heaven based off your works. Because when you get to heaven and you say, well, God, look at all that I did, you have the audacity to boast before God. <laughs> you stand prideful. You say, God, well, look at all that I accomplished. And to be honest, even it declares in Isaiah, it says it in the book of Isaiah, that even on your best days, your best days before God is like a filthy rag. The best day that you've ever had.
before God, it is a filthy rag. It is so dirty and disgusting. I want you to think about the best day you've ever had. I'm talking, now Christians, I'm not talking to you because you've surrendered your life to Jesus. I'm talking to those who have not publicly confessed Jesus as their Lord. And you keep saying that you're a good person. You go to work, you know, you don't do anything bad. I want to tell you that the very best day that you've had, God is telling you now, I see it as a filthy rag. It's almost as if you just, you, I've, I've, took, I've took a white cloth and I've wiped the grease off a car engine. And that's your best day. It's, it's so disgusting, it's not even funny. It's so covered in bad intentions. Your best day was covered in disgusting motives. Your best day, your imaginations were so filled with lust and pride. Man sees the outer appearance of a man, but God sees your heart. Your heart is so evil before God, and it's not your fault. You were born into sin. That's what the Bible says in Psalm 51. David said, God, I was conceived in sin. I was brought forth in iniquity. I was made in sin. And God, some of you are blaming God, saying, God, well, how, how is it that a good God is bringing me to hell? No, a good God is trying to bring you to heaven you. by telling you the truth. He's sending you Christ at salvation. And he says, if you accept him, I'm going to bring you to heaven. Yeah. But you refuse. You refuse. And you know it's true. The Bible says in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. You know God is real. Your conscience testifies with yourself that God is real. Your conscience tells you that you're bad. It's all over the Bible. But let's, let's continue. Today is your day of salvation. This is your day. God is talking to you now, and God wants to save you. God wants to bring you into heaven. You don't even know your last day. We're so fixed. Oh, you know, I can't wait till tomorrow. I got. I, I'm going to church. Or for those of you who are not saved, I can't wait till tomorrow. You know, I'm gonna uh, around 6 p.m. I'm gonna go to the club. Or on Monday, oh, I can't. Well, you know, Monday's about to start. I got. I got work to go. You think that tomorrow is promised? You have no idea that God holds your life. God holds your life in his palms. He could just squeeze and evaporate you. But the thing is, it, it, God, God, the Bible says that God owns all souls. All souls belong to God. But you surrendered your life to Satan. He is your shepherd. He's your master. He's your master. And I mean, Christians, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those who are without Christ. They don't have Jesus in their heart. They are, they're, they're condemned. And God loves them and God wants to save them. But you don't obey him. You don't obey Jesus. You don't obey Jesus. So why would he take you to heaven? Why would you go to a place? Why would you come to someone's house that you, you don't even like? That That's just like... That's just like, all right, you don't like me, and you want to come to my house for dinner. But that, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean, that's like you and God. You don't even like God, but you want to come to heaven? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> how, how do you, you don't even like God, but yet you say, one day I'm going to heaven. Who are you going to spend eternity with? You don't even like him. Oh, Jesus. You don't even like him. How are you going to spend eternity with someone you don't even like? No, the Bible says that men rather darkness than light. You love Satan, so you're going to spend eternity with him. When that day comes and God judges your soul, you are going to be thrown into the lake of fire with the devil. Because you rather serve him. You rather obey your flesh. You rather obey the master of, of, of evil rather than God. This is the truth. But today, God wants to save your life. God wants you to come to his son. God, and you, th you know, you say, well, I can't do that. 
It's too hard. I got all these things going on right now. It's not easy. I can't just let go of them. Listen, if if someone could just let go of them, then then we we wouldn't even need God. No one is able to leave sin. This is why God has made a way through Jesus. When you give your life to him, he sends his spirit into you so that his spirit can can teach you how to live that life. The Bible declares in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, but the anointing of God that is in you teaches you all things. God's power inside of you can help you live that Christian life. You're never going to live on it by yourself. It's God's power and God's presence, God's word inside of you that will help you live this Christian life. That's what's going to help you. But you need to surrender your life to Christ. You need to say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know I make mistakes. Jesus, every day I make mistakes. And Jesus, I know that if you come back now, I'm going to go straight to hell. If you judge my soul, you are going to be just in everything that you say about me. How I'm a liar. I'm a cheater. I'm evil at heart. I lust after women and men every day. But I trust that you died for my sins. I believe that on the cross, you've taken my place. Come into my life. Teach me how to be a disciple. Teach me how to walk after you. And I guarantee you, you're saved. He'll come in. He'll cause you to bend to his will. So, going back to John chapter 10. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Salvation is here today for you. Salvation is here today for you. Now, going back to hearing God's voice. If we can turn to the the book of Numbers, chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12, and we're going to read from verses 1 through 9. But and Miriam, to, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and Miriam and Aaron speak against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Now, now, hold on a second. Let's let's take a good look at verses three. <laughs> now, now, uh, uh, man, now, now, yeah, no, 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 it's okay. Now, my, my brothers and sisters, we listen. I want to teach you something about the uh, about the Bible. Book of Proverbs says, seek after wisdom as if it was gold and silver. It says, ser- like, basically, search after God's word as if it was the most valuable thing in the world. I want to show you something. There, there's some of us here today. We're looking for jobs. We're looking for doors to open and, and, and to go to school, scholarships, loans. And you are seeking. You, you're, you're doing all that you can. Like, like you are searching. You, you, you're going on Google. You're on MapQuest. You're on, you're on all kinds of quests. You're going up and down the street. Everywhere. Different, different companies. You're searching for, for scholarships. All these kinds of grants, loans. You're writing essays. You are seeking after school. You're seeking after loans. You're seeking after these jobs. You see how hard you try? God says, search after my word that hard. My brothers and sisters, when I read the Bible, when I read the word of God, I read it to find out secrets on how to get to God. I want you to think about something, right? How else am I going to know how to get to God Unless I examine people's life in the Bible who've gotten to God already. 
Think about this. The Bible says that David, when he wanted to get to know God, the Bible says that he would inquire of the Lord. He would seek after God. Now, if, and, and, and it said that God responded back to him. God talked back to him. So, if I wanna, if I wanna hear from God, then maybe I'll just go back into the Bible and read that scripture on when David talked to God and God talked back to him. Analyze it. Seek after it as if it was gold and silver. What exactly did David say? What did David do? What kind of things did he, you know, what was around him? What kind of lifestyle did he live? What triggered God to talk back to him? What kind of words did he say? In what kind of spirit was he in? What kind of faith did he have? What kind of things did he do with his life? Because there was something that he did to attract God. So think about it. My brothers and sisters, if you really want to know about God, you have the word of God right here. You have testimonies. You have lifestyles. You have perfect examples of people who have gotten into the presence of God Almighty. You have people who've experienced miracles, visions, dreams. They've experienced personal encounters with God, angels. They've seen God face to face in visions, Isaiah. They've heard God's calling. They've been blinded by God in order to get to God's calling, Paul. I want you to think about that. If you really want to find God, search for him. There's some people who, no, you're not searching for God. You just, you're asking people, oh, what is, what is, how, how do I, how do I do this? How do I get to God? What did you do to get to God? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong, but man, there's nothing wrong with like, you know, talking to people and getting advice, but you need to personally seek after God one-on-one. One-on-one seeking after God. Now, now look at verse 3. Look at what it says. It says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all men which was on the face of the earth. Upon the face of the earth. Do you know what it means to be meek? Do you know what that means? To be meek means that God can actually teach me. Think about that. Can God easily teach you? When God tells you to do something, do you do you do it? You know, sometimes our life it reflects our spiritual life with God. I pray, I pray that everyone heard what I just said. Sometimes our own life, it reflects our spiritual life with God. Think about it. Think about the way you talk to people. Think about all the communications that you have with the people around you. You talk, 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 talk all day long. <laughs> never, never stop talking. And I'm not saying there's something wrong. There's, there's something wrong with talking. There's, there's nothing wrong with talking. Talking expresses your feelings and your emotions. It's actually good to talk. It's dangerous when you have a lot of quiet people around you because you don't know what they're thinking. You, <laughs> you know, so it's good. This talking from a person is a good sign. But my brothers and sisters, when it comes time for you to listen to them, when 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 you're done when you're done talking, and it's time for them to talk. You don't even pay attention. You don't even listen to them. You don't even give them a chance to talk. And you know the funny thing is, while they're talking, you're thinking about something else. Do you do you know that 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 the way you live your life can sometimes reflect your spiritual life? Think about your prayer time. Oh God, I'm getting somewhere. Think about your prayer time. All you're doing is talking, talking, talking. 
You're coming into prayer, talking, talking, talking. You're singing the songs. You're grabbing the presence of God. You're seeking His face. Talk, 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 talk. But when you're done praying, amen, in the name of Jesus, and then you get up and walk away. Do you know that that is one of the most valuable, most precious times when you're done praying to hear from God? The atmosphere is set. You call down heaven. You are praising him. The whole house is filled with the fragrance of worship. God abides in the praises of his people. The spirit of prophecy is in the atmosphere. God's Holy Spirit is moving. It's all over the place. God's voice is ready. His throne is established in your room. It all, you talk to him. You inquire of him. You worship him. Oh, God loves when you talk to him like that. When you pray, somebody, have you ever prayed someone? God, you're so awesome. You just does something to somebody. When you're like, man, you're so, you're so great. God, like, my, will, my life would never be the same without you, man. I, you know, I love seeing you. Every time, you, every time I see you, I get happy. You know how much God loves that? I know I love that when somebody tells me that. <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't know about you, but I love, I love when somebody tells me that. But, but when you do that to God, oh, come on, man. God, that's ten times greater. Now, you got to think about all the times that you have done that. You've praised him, worshipped him, talked to him. And then the atmosphere is set, God is ready to talk, and you get up and you walk away. <laughs> think about it. Sometimes your life, your physical life, reflects your spiritual life. I want you to think about it. You know, all right, so I got I got Sometimes, you know, when I'm rushing outside, this doesn't happen much. I'm going to be over with you guys. Sometimes when I'm rushing, I'm rushing, I'm rushing to get out. I don't have time to put my shoes in the closet. I don't have time to put it away. I, I don't have time to, you know, grab the shirt that was on my bed and throw it in the hamper. So I just leave it out there. You, 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 you know, you, do you see where I'm going? <laughs> you, sometimes your life can reflect your spiritual life. If, how, how could you? How could you possibly let your room get that dirty? You know, I listen. I'm telling you, I make I make a mistake and I will leave. I'll leave it there, and when I get back home, here, I'll clean it. Or if it's laundry day, there'll be a lot of bags around, but I'm cleaning it out. But sometimes the house, the the, the your room, it's so cluttered, and it can reflect your mind, your life. It's just so cluttered. So much things going on. So many thoughts. So it's, and it's all scrambled around. You're just looking in the room and you're like, oh, God, help me. I can't even walk in this place. <laughs> but I know that's what, that was with me, you know. So that's just good and clean, you know. Get that stuff out of there. And that's what we do in prayer. When you pray, it's like you're cleaning your room. You're cleaning out your mind. You're letting all that stuff out, like that, that, that gunk and that, all those thoughts and all those ideas, all those things that touched you and hurt you and things that influenced you and things that caused you to feel down and fearful and depressed and, oh, you're letting all of that out in prayer. Now, I want to show you something. When you let all that out, something has to come back in. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. When you let all that stuff out, all those cares, worries, fears, when you let that out, God has to put something in it to keep you motivated. That's right. And when God is ready to put it in you, after you're done praying, you fall right asleep in bed. You go, oh, give me a dream. <laughs> God, give me a vision. Give me a vision, God. You know, I'm going to go to bed. I mean, God can give you that, but come on. My brothers and sisters, there are levels there are levels in which God can speak to you. The Bible says that Moses was the meekest. He was the one that was easily taught. God could teach him. God could tell him, hey, Moses, get up and go here. Moses would get up and go there. God can easily teach him because he was so receptive. And it wasn't that he was so receptive. He was so faithful. He was faithful. He would listen to God, and he would do it regardless of what anybody said. I want you to, Sister Tiji, keep reading. Let's go. Let's 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 go down to verses um, six. 
26. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. The similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the angel of the Lord, huh? Yeah, praise the Lord. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I want, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. But I want you to just just look at what the Bible just said. You see, you, I want you to see the levels on which God can speak. Mm. The Bible says that when when there's a prophet around in those days, God would make Himself known. God would reveal Himself. God would give revelation, talk to Him through visions, through mm. dreams, through dark speeches. Mm. Don't you feel like that sometimes? Mm. You know God is talking, but you don't really know what He's saying. That's right. You you just you're like, hmm, man. You know, I got, I know it's you because my ear, my you know, my my spirit is moving. Mm. I'm I'm attentive. I can feel you. The atmosphere just shifted. My spirit is being tingled, but I just can't make out what you're saying, God. It's not clear. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there's a reason for that. First, the Bible says Moses was the meekest. He was easily taught by God. If God told him to do something, he did it without anyone stopping him. Is that a quality that you have? Delayed obedience is disobedience. Okay. Taking your time to, to, to do what God is asking of you is disobedience before God. Look what else it says. It says that Moses was faithful in all of my house. This means that whatever God asked of Moses, Moses would do it. He would do it. Do you have that quality? Are you faithful with God? When God tells you something, would you do it? If God says, hey, listen, after you pray, just spend five minutes listening. Will you do that? Will you be faithful in with all, in with all God's house? And and that's what it that's what it's saying right there. It says with him I will not speak in dark speeches. You see that? See you see it, God does not have a problem talking. You have a problem understanding. Jesus said, "My sheep hear." That word means to understand. My sheep will understand my voice. Moses had no problem understanding God. Because God spoke clearly to him. My brothers and sisters, I'm about to give you some principles that are going to help you. God is about to start speaking clearly to you. No more doubts. No more confusion. No more second guessing. No more wondering, hey, whoa, I know this is God, but man, huh? wait, something's going on here. No more of that. No more of that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I listen. I'm telling. I can. I don't want to guarantee off my own. Off my own. Uh, off my own words. Off my own self. Make you a promise off of me. But I'm telling you. If you would heed to the to the to the word of God, if you would heed to the voice of God, I'm telling you, you will hear God's voice. The Bible says, believe in God and so shall you be established. And believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. You, you will go far. You will hear God's voice. One of, the first, one of the first things I can say about hearing God's voice, you need to pray. <laughs> I, know, I know the town spent to come on with Christians. We've been hearing that all the time. You know, we been we know how to we we've no, we know pray we know we need to pray. But no, hold on a second. There's some of us right now. We're going through some things. We need guidance from God. 
We need direction from God. We need God to speak to us about a specific thing. Am I right? But the thing is, you need to begin to pray about it. Jesus said in the scriptures, If you seek, surely you shall find. If you ask, surely you shall receive. If you knock, the door will be open to you. The problem is not that God does not want to talk to you about it, but you're not praying about it. And sometimes, you know, we pray, but we pray to God and we say, God, you know, God, I want, I want this, God, I want this. That, that's only for the first day. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe for the second day, we'll go to God and say, hey, God, I need this. The same issue will bring it up again. But when God does not speak to you about it for the first or second time, we usually just give up. I'm going to be honest. That's me. We usually just, hey, you know what? Maybe God doesn't want me to have it. But that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Do, do you know, I, I was talking to one of my brothers yesterday. I told, uh, we were talking, we were both talking about um, a lot a lot of different things. But one of the things that God kind of pushed pushed me to say was faith, faith is proven throughout time. You want to see someone who has faith? Give them time. You could have faith for one day. You could believe in God for something for two days. But give, give them a week and see if you'll still be believing God for that. The Bible says that Moses was in the presence of God for seven days. I love that scripture in Exodus. He was in God's presence for seven days, seeking God's face. And the Bible says on the sixth day, God spoke to him. Talk about patience in the presence of God. You see, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. And, you know, you tried to practice that stillness before God. You tried to practice that, and it didn't work. Do you know, I, do you know I've been practicing? I'm still practicing stillness now. <laughs> do, do you know, like, I'm still, and I've learned this probably about three years ago. And there are times where God just, he just, he's just not saying nothing. There's, and there's nothing wrong with that. He's just not saying, sometimes it's God is just saying, hey, listen, just be quiet. We'll both be quiet together. And let's just enjoy each other. We don't even have to talk. Have you ever felt that with a person? You know, maybe like a friend, a good friend of yours. Some of you guys who are married, you know, your husband and wife. Sometimes you guys just sit there together. You sit with your friend, one of my brothers, you know. Sometimes I just sit there with him. Quiet, both of us quiet, nothing to say. Totally in peace with one another. And just thinking, reflecting. Just enjoying each other's presence without even without even talking. Sometimes that's God. You know, you know, sometimes God, He's just quiet and you're quiet, and you guys are just basking in each other's presence. Oh God. Just overwhelmed with who God is. Literally, literally, like overwhelmed with God. Like, wow, God, you are amazing. Oh, wow. Just no words, God. And he's like, listen, I got no words for you, too. <laughs> I'm amazed by you. Oh. oh, God, man, you know, fearfully and wonderfully made. Love, beloved of God. Oh, man. Oh, God, I could just picture it. You know, I could picture heaven. I could picture it now. Just, I'm telling you, God, those of us who gave our life to Jesus, you know, we're doing our best. You know, we fall, but we get up. That righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up. It's not, God doesn't hate you. Come on. He doesn't hate you. He gave his son. He gave Jesus for you. What won't he do for you? I mean, like, he gave his son for you. Now he's going to kill you? No. He just... Just sitting in the presence of God. Sometimes it's quiet. Sometimes none of us have anything to say to each other. <coughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But my brothers and sisters, if you have something, to, if you have 
If you need God to give you guidance, you have to pray about it. You have to constantly pray. Keep praying. Persistency in prayer. It's all over the scriptures. The woman with the, the the woman with the Gentile judge, the friend who was on a journey to get some bread. Persistency. Con- persistence and consistency. Mm-hmm. Both of those. Persistent. You have to be persistent and consistent. Th- those are two different words. Persistence means you try, you fail, you keep going. You tried, you failed, you keep going. Consistence means you you keep an even pattern, meaning daily, constantly. You see, there's, there's a difference because you can be persistent but not consistent. You can you can keep going. You could you could try, fail, and then five months later come back again and try, fail. Five months later come back and tr- you see that you you you're persevering, but you're not consistent. Consistency daily. Consistency every every second, every minute, every hour. I'm consistent. I'm staying at this rate and I'm going higher. Mm-hmm. I'm coming to God daily, every day. God, you hear me every day. I'm gonna bother you so much. You ever seen? I mean, you ever seen a kid bother a parent? Sometimes the parents are like, oh my God, you know what? Just get away from me here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just, just go somewhere. Oh my God, like get away. Give me peace. Man, are you causing God to feel like that sometimes? I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes it's good. Sometimes you got to make God like, hey, man, get out of here. You come before me too much about this. Get out of here. You, sometimes you got to do that. I'm not saying all the time. Sometimes God will tell you flat out no. And, and sometimes it's right. But sometimes, man, God, God wants to see, hey, how passionate are you about this? What do you think I'm just going to, you're going to ask me and I'm going to give it to you and then, and then two days later you're just going to waste it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You know, the more passionate you are about something, the more you try to get something, the more when you get it, you appreciate it. When you receive that, you'll be like, whoa. Do you know how long it took for me to just wait and get you? <laughs> you I'm taking care. I'm taking care of this right there. So one of the first things you got to do is you got to pray. I'm telling you, if you really want to hear God's voice, you have to pray about whatever it is. Some of us need guidance from God. We need direction from God. God, I need a vision. How could a man or woman walk without a vision? How could you walk without a purpose? How could you walk without knowing what God has called you to do? No, 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 no. You got to know. But so many of us, we say, yeah, God, I want to know. But you're not willing to pay the price in prayer. Amen. You're not willing to be persistent. You're not willing to be consistent. You're not willing to strive in the presence of God for that. No, no, no. We have to be like Moses and say, God, I want to see your glory. God, I want to see it. And if he doesn't show it to me today, I'm coming back tonight. I wake up in the morning, God, I want to see your glory. I don't hear nothing. I say, all right, God, you're lucky I got to go to school. God, it's 7.30. I got to go to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, but we're going to close this session right here. Because uh, I'm not, you know, I, I don't want anyone to think, oh, okay, you, now now when I close it, I can't keep talking to God. No, you can talk to God. But that personal devotion, silence, stillness, in that secret place with God, that's precious. That's different from just praying without ceasing. That special time that you set apart, that's like taking your wife or your, your your husband or your girlfriend or your parent, your friend, your buddy, your brother, your sister. That's like you two going out on on, on dinner. You know, you, you see, you can, you guys could walk down the street and eat a sandwich together and you're just snacking. You know, you're just that's how you and God are with praying. You could just you're just snacking. But when you go to dinner, you set up that date. That's just you, you and him, you and her, you and your brother, you and your pastor, focusing on each other and no other distraction. There's a difference between praying without ceasing, walking down the street, going wherever you want to go, and then sitting down in your devotion time. Because you show God you are, it's all about you right now. So pray about it. Seek after God for it. Don't stop searching. Don't stop knocking. God didn't give it to you in the morning. He didn't say anything in the morning. God, hmm. 8 p.m. tonight, God. <laughs> Woo! Mm. You better be ready, God. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, you know, we need to we need to love Him, but also revere Him too. Don't think that God 
everybody's just your big buddy, 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 and he just, you know, you got to also res respect him. But the, more, the deeper you get into a relation, you know, that love just grows. You know, you know who he is. It's like growing up from a child, a child relation, a child relationship to their parent and a child's and a, an adult's relationship to their parent. You know, when you were younger, you couldn't say anything to your parents because, hey, respect. You need to learn respect as you grow. But when you become an adult, you already develop that respect for your your mom, your dad. You you reverence them. You respect them. And you love them so deep that you could sit down with your mom and say, Mom, how are you doing? And that's the same with God. So tell him, God, I'll be back tonight at 8 p.m. I'll be back tonight, God. Show him that you believe in him. Uh, we're going to close soon, but I have uh, two two more points. And it's just... We said that you need to pray. You have to be persistent. You have to be consistent. You have to keep coming to God about it in order to hear him about it. Bring the issue to him, and he'll bring the answer to you. But if you don't bring the issue to him... You don't bring the problem to him. How can he bring an answer to you? Bring the issue to God, whatever it is. Second thing is you need to have a renewed mind. Your mind has to be renewed before you even touch prayer. And the reason why you need to renew your mind is because faith comes by hearing my, and by hearing of the word of God. He who comes to God must have faith. You need to know who you are in God. You need to know who God is. You need to come before him knowing that he hears you because you're righteous through Christ. The Bible says the prayer of the righteous man availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. It goes far. The Psalms declare, it says, God, my prayer comes right before your ears. It passes through your sanctuary. Your prayers touch God's ears. You need to have faith in that. Some of us pray, and we can't even imagine our words going past the ceiling. <laughs> you're praying, and you're like, oh, God, I know you're not even hearing this, but I'm just going to do it. So what, what, what is that? You expect God to talk back to that? You're like, oh, God, you know, oh, God, I know you don't even hear a sinner like me. Because you don't even know who you are. What do you mean that you, God, you can't, you know, I'm a sinner, God, I'm horrible, I'm bad. Yeah, that's who you were. God, I gave my life, God, I was a sinner, I gave my life to you. You declared me righteous on the cross. I thank you that I can come and ask for forgiveness. You said if I confess my sins, you will cleanse me of all unrighteousness. You said I can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy. Do you know who you are now? Oh, God, you know, I did this. Oh, God, I'm so bad. I'm sorry, God. Oh, I know you don't even want to listen to me now, God. I don't know my prayers not even doing anything, but I'm just going to pray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck having God talk back to that. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. There is no way you can please God. Everything done outside of faith is sin. You're sinning when you pray like that. Oh, God, wow, that better preach. Amen, amen, amen. You are sinning when you pray to God like that. When you pray to God without knowledge of who you are, without knowledge of, of faith, without, without faith, you are sinning. It's abomination to God. You are praying an abomination. God does not want to hear that. You piss God off when you talk like that. Because he's done so much and you do not even respect or acknowledge what he's done. You don't even acknowledge that. You don't even know. It's like you have no knowledge of who of who you are, and you're praying to him. That's why. That's why you haven't even heard from God. You know that, right? You know that's why he's been so silent. You know that's why. Do you know that's why? Because you don't even know how to pray. You pray with no faith. You don't even believe. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know the things he's done. You cannot pray without knowledge. You, and, and knowledge is the substance. That's what gives you faith. By hearing God's word, receiving God's word, knowing who you are. That's what produces faith, and that's what gives you access into heaven. Hallelujah. Who wants to come to heaven with me today? Amen. You better have some faith. Hallelujah. You better believe. That's right. You better know who you are in God.
God. You better know it. You better understand that Jesus is the righteousness of God. And he declared you righteous as soon as you believed in him. He switched places with you. Jesus became a sinner and you became righteous. So now when you pray, God hears you. But you have to come to God with that understanding. You have to come to God like that. He who comes to God must come to him in faith. You must know that he is. You must know that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You should be rewarded a long time ago. Look how much you've been seeking after God. Look how much you've been pressing into prayer. Look how much you've been trying and trying to try. It, the problem is you just didn't even understand. You didn't even have the faith. You didn't even believe it. You've been doing all that. I dare you to just believe once before you come into God's presence. And just watch what happens. The kind of prayer that a righteous man makes. You're not righteous because of what you've done. You're righteous because of what God has did. That's why you're righteous. Now, you know, righteousness produces obedience. So a true sign that you, you accept the Christ and you're righteous is that you practice God's word. But come on, you got to pray, consistent, persistent, keep pressing, night and day, night and day. Listen, one of the things I do is sometimes you got so much going on that you can't even know, you don't even remember what to pray for. You get a little notebook, write it down. Write it down, write down what you need from God. Write down the vision, write down what you need God to answer and keep pressing after that. Come to God in knowledge and in faith and when God answers it, Scratch it off the list and testify about what he did. Amen. Telling you, telling you that I'm telling you, you want to know how to hear God's voice, but I dare you to practice these things. Amen. God will start talking to you like like water. Like rivers of water. He'll just start you think God, please, please God, take a break between talking to me because the more knowledge I have, the more responsibility I have. The more God talks to me, that means the more that he requires of me. To whom much is given, much is what? Required. 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 If you you really want God to talk to you, be careful. Be ready to say yes. So come to God praying, consistent, persistent. Write it down. God, I need this. Every night, God, I need this. Come to him in faith. Know who you are. Do not pray any prayers of abomination with no knowledge. Ignorant prayers. You are just like the Samaritans. You're just like that Samaritan woman. She just can't, oh, you know, we worship. Uh, who cares? You don't even know who you are. God does not even listen to that. You need to know who you are. Know who he is. He who comes to God must know who he is. You need to know knowledge is key. Knowledge produces your faith, and faith gives you access to God's ears. Brothers and sisters, the last point I have. You must be still and know that He is God. Like I said before, we pray, we worship, we establish God's throne in our room, in our living room, wherever we are, in our home, sometimes in school. We praise him. He inhabits the praises of his people. The spirit of prophecy, the spirit, the Holy Spirit comes to try to talk to us. And we say in Jesus' name and go to bed. We say in Jesus' name, get out and go get something to eat. No. Just be still for five minutes. You know, being still is more important than praying. I'm not telling you don't pray. Pray, pray, pray. But the stillness is more potent than the prayer. Because in the prayer, I'm talking. In the stillness, he's talking. God is talking in the stillness. You think that you praying is really is really doing the damage? No way. It's doing stuff. It's doing great things. It's attracting God. It's breaking chains. It's interceding, intercession for other people. It's clearing out your mind, clearing out your spirit. That's doing great things. But hey, when he talks, oh my God, my God. When God talks, things are created. When God talks, the world is established. When God talks, the mountains tremble. Why don't you just let him talk to you? Take that time in that stillness with God. Take that time with stillness. Pray, 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 press. 
Be consistent. Be persistent. Push, push. Keep your faith. Come to God in the knowledge of who you are. Read the Bible. Understand. Seek after wisdom as if it was gold and silver. The way you searched after that job, the way you searched after that scholarship, you read the Bible like it's a newspaper. You read it just to read it. What? You read it just to, for what? No, read it to find out who you are. Read it to find out who he is. Read it and be like, hey, God, I want to know why David got that vision from you. I want to know why you appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked him anything he wants. I want to know why. Because I want to experience that. I want to know why you came to Abraham with those three people. Don't you want to know why?